to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing end them, to die, to sleep, no more. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, it is a consummation devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep, to sleep perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time when he himself might as quiet as make with a bare bodkin? Who would Vardals bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life but that the dread of something after death the undiscovered country from whose born no traveller returns puzzles the will, and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sickly o'er with the pale cast of thought, and enterprises of great pitch and moment with this regard their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Now might I do it, but now he is a-praying, and now we'll do it, and so he goes to heaven, and so am I revenged? No, not so. He took my father sleeping, his sins brimful, and how his soul stood to the state of heaven, who knows, save the immortal powers? No, when he is drunk, asleep, or in his rage or in the incestuous pleasure of his bed, at game of swearing, or about some act that has no relish of salvation in it, then trip him that his heels may kick at heaven, and that his soul may be as damned and black as hell whereto it goes. My mother stays. This physic but prolongs thy sickly days.